Uh, we have another AFC late game going on Sunday. The Patriots are at the Texans. The suddenly shaky Patriots going from 10-0 to a two-game losing streak here, so the sky may be falling on them, and this really comes down to injuries and some uncharacteristic sloppy play with the special teams on Sunday, which is just baffling, having a 14-0 lead against a bad Eagles team, somehow giving up 35 points in a row in a very unusual game. So they are in bounce-back mode, which is very unusual for this team. And then you got a Houston team that's back in this division race in this lousy division that they're in battling with Indy. So a 6-6 six and six record can get them a uh, division title here, Harvard. So this is a good test for the Patriots on a two-game losing streak and a must-win game for Houston. Well, first of all, New England has no idea how to play a bounce-bounce game. Uh, they don't get too many opportunities. You know, since uh, 2012, I believe it's a 50 over 54 games. So this is a rare event that they've lost two games in a row, and they just managed to do that. And it's been 13 years. You've got to go all the way back to 2002 to find the last time that they had three in a row losses. And I think that's what the odds makers are counting on. I think they believe that the public is going to no way believe that New England is capable of losing three in a row. But, yes, they are. Uh, you know, Houston, 6-6, six and six, they're right in the mix of things. Uh, Brian Hoyer, you know what, he's not playing so bad. 61% completions, he's only had six interceptions. They play kind of more of a controlled uh, offense, and hopefully they can get their defense out there. DeAndre uh, Hopkins, uh, he's got 1,200 yards, uh, so, you know, they hook up uh, pretty well. Uh, on a positive note, uh, uh, you know, I think that Brady's going to have to throw the ball with uh, Deion Lewis out, Gronk's out, their wide receivers out, a makeshift band-aid offensive line. Well, the defense for uh, Houston's number three in the country uh, against the pass. So I believe last week they had an off week when they played at Buffalo, but it wasn't the end of the world. 30-21 to 21 on the road against Buffalo, not so bad. Uh, they did win four in a row here just right before that, and their defense had really come together. They were allowing nine points per game. But here's another thing. If you look at the coaching staff to be able to prepare for this game plan, the Texans linebacker coach, where did he come from? From New England. Where did the defensive coordinator come from? He came from New England. Where did uh, Coach Bill O'Brien come from? Five years as a coordinator at New England. So I think they know this team probably better than any team that anybody would know against New England. And I don't think there's going to be anything that they uh, can't plan on and can't put forth. So I'm going to take uh, Houston plus the uh, three points. All right, this Houston team on a nice run here, four and one straight up in ATS, but they come off that unusual game at Buffalo where the defense had been great during that four game winning streak, but they just fell apart against Buffalo, giving up 390 yards. They are pretty good while facing teams with winning road records, 21-9 and nine against the spread. They've settled on Brian Hoyer, which he probably should have been there the entire time. 18 touchdowns, 6 picks. He's had a fine game trying to find some offensive balance, too. But as Harvard mentioned, the defense now playing up to its capabilities outside of a poor performance on the road last week. So, Zach, when you look at this game, what's the edge here? Quarterback play, home field, or healthy bodies? Uh, well, I just think it's just New England overall. You know, off of two losses, you have – a little bit of plus that game against the Giants that they won sloppily so there's uh, that perceived notion that the Patriots are sliding backwards and that's what they do or this is what Bill Belichick does he adjusts he's the number one uh, coach in football for a reason he's able to adjust and a couple losses isn't going to deter the Patriots mindset um, they'll get healthy in time for the playoffs and I think this matchup against the Texans on the road you have to expect New England to uh, up their play a little bit no, Tom Brady, last week's, let's let, break down their losses last week against the Philadelphia Eagles, basically a special teams breakdown. Two, uh, well, one punt return, a punt block, and then uh, Brady's pick six, so it wasn't on the defense at all. They still had a chance to win that game late. Um, and then the loss prior to that against the Denver Broncos, they blew a big lead. So I'm not going to overreact to those two losses because they 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 could have they could have won last week, obviously, wasn't for the special teams miscues, and the week before that. They just blew a big fourth quarter lead in the snow on the road in Denver on Sunday night. Um, so this week against the Houston Texans, you've got a Brian Hoyer, who I profiled before when his stints in the with the Cleveland Browns. Last year we started off the six and two, and then he had that tailspin finish to the season that uh, eventually led him to lose his job and head to Houston. This year could not beat out Ryan Mallett, who was disastrous. So you got to you got to predict that. 
those reasons will come to the forefront on why he lost that job to Ryan Mallett. And I think this is a good week for that. He struggled against teams that have winning records throughout his whole career. And uh, being in that AFC South has been able to mask that a little bit because those teams have been atrocious. So New England, I know that uh, they, uh, Houston has a lot of those ex-coaches uh, from New England staff on their team. And Josh McDaniels did beat uh, Bill Belichick in 2009. But the values is on the Patriots. I think they get out of that slump and do so in a big way. All right. Normally, with indoor games like this, I would take a look at the total going over. But I'm not going to do it this game because I love the, the way the defenses have been playing of late. I like the defensive talents, and I like the matchup, too. So I'm going to stay away from this total because a lot of the trends and the matchups point toward an under. And it is, uh, it's not a high total here. It's right around where it should be. However, I will take a, a stand on the side. So I'm going to have to break the tie between you two guys. And I'm going to go with the visiting team here, and for a lot of reasons. It's a bounce-back spot for the Pats, 38-5 and five after a straight-up loss. Now, granted, they were in that situation last week and lost two, but the spread numbers are just as sizzling, 35-16-1 against the spread after loss. Even last year, when they were 2-2, two and two, coming off that bad loss against Kansas City, I thought the Bengals were the right side in that uh, Sunday night game, and the Pages went out and just clobbered the Bengals Learn my, I haven't learned my lesson watching this team that you have to be really careful. Zach was talking about the special teams breakdowns. Very rare for this team. They're usually very disciplined. And this is two games in a row, the fumble punt and then the catastrophe last week. They're not this bad on special teams. I can see them getting that fixed. And then the offensive side of the ball, Brady throwing the interception in the red zone. Or he throw two in the red zone. And that's just ridiculous. He, he, I can't see him doing that again. Uh, it was just a bonehead play, and uh, you know they, they probably should have won that game if one or two things they changed one or two things. Instead, everything went against them last week by their own uh, misfiring, and they lost that game. So, I think it's a pretty good uh, bounce back spot against Brian Hoyer, who's had a very good game. But I'm also worried about what the Buff the Houston defense did last week against Buffalo. Uh, that was a, a very difficult. Performance, and uh, it's a short number here on the defending champs. So I'll run back to Pats in this one. All right, let's get to some uh, best bets for the weekend. Plus, Harvard, you're in bounce back mode too with these sizzling high end high roller plays. Well, hey, 21 and 9 for the season, but uh, you know, I, I, I know I sound enthusiastic coming forward, not so much going backwards when I lost with the Raiders last week. Uh, what a, you know, I don't know, Kansas City, uh, Alex Smith, uh, I think I'm going to elect him to the Hall of Fame. This guy just Hall keeps doing it. Uh, no, I'm telling you what, Alex Smith, he, he, he might, I think he's glad he got out of uh, San Francisco <laughs> when he did. What is he throwing, like 585 passes without having an interception? And he just keeps doing it and doing it and doing it. I mean, here's a guy that, what do they want, six games and uh, all without Jamil Charles and, uh, you know, anyway, the Raiders stunk up the place. Uh, Carr, who I really think is going to be a great quarterback in the next 10 years, uh, you know, for most of those uh, games he plays uh, over the next decade. But anyway, big loser. Put me an L next to that. Uh, NFL Triple Super Systems Play of the Year. Uh, you know, I had one about three or four weeks ago in the colleges, our triple uh, huge winner, triple systems play, easy winner. Uh, this one for the NFL is in a system that has never lost. So this game should be an absolute uh, easy, uh, well, nothing's easy in the NFL, but uh, it's going to be the easiest play on the board. Let's just word it that way. 21-9 uh, and nine with one tie this year. you got to go right with the records. Uh, you know, anytime you're hitting over 70% for the season, nothing wrong with that. So mark me down for the triple systems, super systems uh, play uh, of the year, and it's coming out. It should be up there by this Friday or Saturday. All right, and Zach, you continue to win in all of four of the sports that are going on right now. We have going for this weekend. Yeah, I can't believe this season, uh, even though we're getting in, we're in December, I still can't believe this season. Hopefully we can keep it going to end 2015 and carry it over to 2016. College basketball just started three weeks ago. 57% um, in that. Still got, still got some work to do to catch up in these other sports, but NFL strong, 35-16-1. NBA 29 and 15, and then college football 42 and 26. So these are the weeks right now. Uh, we're going to keep it going with the NBA, probably four to five plays a week. College basketball, eight to ten, and then college uh, football, the bowl games. I'm not crazy on the bowl games. 
I usually like to stick to five to six games, and I usually like to have bowl games that are past the New Year's. There's so many teams playing in that uh, time frame between December 19th and New Year's that shouldn't be in bowl games, so I tend to stay away from those. Maybe I'll have one in, in that time frame, but look for those bowl games to be from New Year's and after. Um, I'm just trying to hold steady. Look for a four or five game NFL package this week. I like the games, and I like the two plays that we mentioned here on the, the show. You only give out four bowl games. There's 500 bowl games. <laughs> <laughs> too many, like too many, week. too many. Well, a bowl game is very similar to a regular season game. I mean, you know what? There's a winner in every game. you gotta, yep. you got to play some of these games, Zach. You know, yep. put it out there. <laughs> yeah, somebody told me once that the way they handicap the bowl games is completely opposite the way they handicap the regular season mm -hmm. games because it's so different with the emotion and so forth. Well, if you, I tell you what, there used to be, uh, I'd have to check this, maybe I will between now and then, but it used to be that uh, from the start all the way until December 31st, you play all the dogs, and then once that hits, you play the favorites. So we'll see how that works out. All right, and Jim Feist this weekend has his NFL home field game of the year. It's an early release, too. Jim has already jumped on it. You can find that at Jim Feist dot com as well as plays from Zach and Harvard. All right, that'll do it for the NFL version of Pro Line. Oh, my free play for the weekend is that Steelers-Bengals game under the total. Good luck with the games, everyone, and we'll see you next week.